Um, measuring, describing, and mapping your parcel. So for measuring your parcel, there's a couple of options. As noted before, uh, using a uh, real tape is a really handy tool. You can use a, a rope that's marked off at uh, individual uh, measurements. Uh, avoid something that's stretchy. Um, what we're looking for, we're looking to get a fairly accurate measurement. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be down to the inch of what your parcel is at. Uh, when you're measuring your, uh, your line, the biggest thing is making sure that you are at, accurately measuring the distance. Uh, so this graphic is also containing your staking instructions. And the point being is that if you were, when the surveyor goes out there to measure your boundary, they're going to be measuring the horizontal distance of that boundary. So if you're gonna be on a slope, which a lot of the areas are, Tatalina, Snake Lake has uh, you know, a lot of areas with significant slope, East Fork Pass is another one. So if you're gonna be measuring down a hill, if you stretch that tape out 1,320 feet, depending on what the slope is, that boundary line may only end up at 800 feet. So that's gonna affect your acreage, that's gonna affect what you're ultimately staking. So uh, plan for that. A real easy way to do it is, if Veil Free is standing uphill of me, she can stand on the tape, I can pull that out and get that thing about horizontal, and then measure that distance. She can walk down to me, stand on the tape again over here. I can pull that thing out and hold that thing about horizontal that way. And we can just add that all up. If you're savvy enough to do so, if you're familiar uh, with the process of doing it, uh, you can get a clinometer and you can measure the slope from one distance to another, stretch it out, and just do the trigonometry on it and figure out what that slope is. However, you're most comfortable doing it, just provided that we get that accurate measurement as to where it's at. Um, so, we're going to ask, and so this is continued on, uh, page, so again on page two of your lease application there. Um, so once you locate your reference point, you're going to get a distance and direction to your reference point. You put that corner number or that, that corner in. So starting at corner number one, you put that in there. You describe adequately what that corner is. It's a four by four post. It's a Carsonite post. It's a squared up birch tree. It's a squared up spruce tree. It's painted orange, pink, whatever that may be. You know, and you describe it fully. Then from that corner, to my corner, from corner number one to my corner number two, I'm gonna put on uh, the distance, that, or sorry, the, uh, the direction. So we're first off, we're asking for cardinal direction. So north, south, east, west, northeast, south, you know, southeast, that sort of thing. So describe the cardinal direction from each post to the, to the next. Um, then we're gonna ask you to describe the angle or the azimuth between them. So this is where that compass comes in handy. So we're looking for specifically the value in zero to 360 degrees. The easiest way to do this is, you know, so you go out there, you've already got, you know, chances are you do all corner posts, you know, all your brushing and flagging and everything done first. You walk over there to your corner number one, set that up on top of the nice flat spot on, the, on your corner post and just sight right down with it. Anyway, and so you can get a very accurate measurement of specifically what that is. That's gonna count for declination, which we're gonna cover uh, in a minute here. But getting a nice compass, sending in for declination is gonna help. Specifically, a nice compass with a mirror. You know what the mirror's for? Figuring out who the lost person is. <laughs> so, anyway, the, um, so you map that all out, get, uh, get an accurate measurement on there. In order to get an accurate measurement, you're gonna need to account for declination. So without going into the specifics of declination, magnetic north is different from true north. So true north is the North Pole. Magnetic north is actually located somewhere north of Canada, up around Hudson Bay. So your, the needle, the north needle on your compass is gonna be pointing towards kind of north of Hudson Bay there. So to account for that, you have to adjust your, your compass or make adjustments to your measurement to account for declination. So anywhere in the state of Alaska and also depending on just local geomagnetic features and such, it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, if you don't account for declination, it's gonna throw your parcel off and it's gonna be rotated, you know, whatever some, uh, you know, to some degree. So, specifically, we would recommend that you get a good compass and adjust this for declination. The declination specific to your area is gonna be located on your staking map right there. If you're not comfortable with declination, uh, you can do the, you know, if you're not comfortable with setting your compass for the declination, you can take the measurements in magnetic and then do the calculation to it, so you're just adding the declination. So if you're measuring something at 40 degrees, you're gonna add 14 degrees for Snake Lake. Uh, I said 40 degrees, right? So it's gonna be 54 degrees, anyway, in that case. Otherwise, if, if you're uncomfortable doing that, or you're not sure what you did you know, with it, 
take, you know, bring in your compass, bring in your measurements, and just hand it to us and say, this is what I did, and this is how I measured it. We just need to know what you did. You know, so even if, uh, you know, if you're uncomfortable doing it, if you're not sure exactly what you did, the more information you can provide us so that we can get the accurate information, that's what ultimately really matters. So, for information specifically about uh, declination, you can refer to page 29 of your staking instructions if you need more information on it. You're gonna go out, you're gonna put your reference point in the ground, you're gonna measure the direction, the azimuth, and the distance from your reference point to your corner number one. Then, you're gonna go from your corner number one, measure the direction, the azimuth, and the distance to your corner number two, then likewise from two to three, three to four, back to corner number one, or if you have a you know, fifth corner in there, you may have to go to five and then back to one. Um, so, we're gonna ask for those distances on all of them, and go describing each successive corner post down the line until you get back to the, uh, back to the point of uh, beginning effectively. So, this is all gonna be pages two to four of your staking instruction. Um, we're also gonna ask for some very specific information um, on here. So, uh, other than describing your corner post, if you are, if that boundary is along, uh, so between your corner, uh, your corner number one and corner number two, maybe along a, uh, maybe a shared boundary with an adjacent parcel, uh, either one that's pre-surveyed, you list the ASLS number on there, if you know who owns it, put down who owns it, for instance. Um, if it's going to be along another stake parcel, their corners, their, their, their name and information is going to be on their corner posts. Write that information on there. If it's along a water body, indicate that it's along a water body or along the setback from the Steese Highway or along the setback from the Mulchatna River, something like that. So indicate what that boundary is common to. Um, if it crosses a, you know, whatever, some major geologic feature, yeah, we want to know about that. If it crosses a trail or something, indicate, you know, whatever, where that, where that may be. So give us all the information from that. Um, specifically, we're going to be asking for um, a preferred building site um, on there. And when we say building site, that, that's not a requirement that you have to construct, you know, whatever building there, or that you have to construct in that location. Specifically, what we're looking for is we want to know um, where that important part in that parcel is, right? So we want to know if, uh, in some cases, uh, in, in one area we had a gentleman who was interested in a helicopter pad, you know, whatever for the area, because that's how he planned on accessing it. So, when we go out to survey, if we have to do modifications to your parcel, we want to be sure that we can modify your parcel and try and retain that important aspect of that parcel for you. So if you can give us a coordinate and a description of that particular area and put a post in the ground at that spot, that will help the surveyor when he's out in the field to retain that specific area. So that will help us in the long run and help you out to get what you want. Using a GPS uh, to, to describe your, uh, your coordinates. So as noted before, be familiar with the GPS. Get, uh, you know, get familiar with how to operate it, how to put in waypoints, how to uh, navigate to those waypoints, etc. Um, a couple of tips about using that. So um, in addition to setting it up in advance, it's very good to let it warm up. So if you're taking off out of Anchorage here, you fly up to Half Cabin, Spank Lake, wherever it's going to be, uh, if you go to turn that GPS on, it's going to take a while for that to, you know, to, for that to, to calculate. So you drive up to Fairbanks, you know, whatever, you know, pull off as you're getting your snow machine ready, you're getting your staking materials, throw it up there on the hood. We recommend throwing it up on the hood once you actually get there, then before you start driving the Parks Highway. So, you might not have that anymore. So, throw it up there, let it warm up a little bit. And by warming up, what effectively we're looking at, what we mean is that it takes a while to, a while to acquire that lock on those satellites, right? So, once you actually acquire that satellite, and you, it's gonna pick up several satellites, it's pinging back and forth for a while. Once you pick several of them up, it locks onto them, and it's a whole lot easier for that. It takes quicker, so you can shut your GPS off, you know, you walk a couple hundred yards down the trail, you go out there the next morning, you turn the thing on, it's gonna pick up a lot quicker. But it takes a while initially to get that, that general location for it. Additionally, if you're gonna be working uh, somewhere under tree cover, so if you're gonna be working with an overhead obstruction, or if you're gonna be, uh, you know, whatever, I mean, if it's, I mean, be that trees, or, you know, whatever is that, uh, not so much buildings, but geographic features. If you can go to an area to where it's open, in a way, and you get, you know, whatever, a good signal, and then walk into that location that's under tree cover, it's actually gonna give you better information than if you try and just get it from right there. Likewise, when you're getting that information from your, uh, uh, from your GPS, you know, you're standing there at your corner post, you're standing there at uh, your, your uh, reference point or your, uh, your building site post, something like that, set the GPS right up on top of the post. While you're getting other stuff ready, just let it acquire and let it sit there and calculate for a while and 
Although most consumer uh, grade GPSs don't average points, it'll effectively, I mean, the longer it sits there, the more accurate it's gonna give you that information. So let it sit in that site and then just reach up there and capture that point. And then also write it down, just in case it accidentally deletes it. So the, the more that you can help your GPS out to get the more accurate information, the better off uh, the information's ultimately gonna be. You can use your GPS to get distance direction. However, I would strongly caution you against it. You can use it as a supplemental tool for getting that, that for measuring that distance, but with a consumer grade GPS, most of them, so, so most of the distance you're gonna be working in are gonna be hundreds of feet. So you're looking at, I mean, at, at minimum, your, bound, your smallest boundary is gonna be about 330 feet, probably. So, so that being the case, uh, once you get, you know, upwards of around, you know, three, 400 feet, most of your consumer grade GPS is start registering in tenths of a mile, right? So 528 foot increments, effectively. So we would prefer that you actually measure it out and then use your GPS to kind of confirm that measurement. Because giving us that information in tenths of a mile really is not accurate enough. So another tool that we don't actually discuss here that's handy, again, is a supplementary tool, but a range finder. You know, with range finders, you kind of get what you pay for, you know, whatever, a little bit. But if you're standing on your line, I can have, you know, Lauren, my staking assistant, up there, you know, whatever, down the line, and she can be standing there, and I can range off of her to tell me what that, what that distance is. Be cautious, though, that, you know, that, I mean, so this after being, after you've already brushed and flagged, and everything is, you know, all the overhead of or the line of sight is all cleared, if you have a branch or a leaf or something like that sticking out, it'll, it can pick up off of that, and it can affect your signal as well. But it's a good tool for kind of confirming the measurement that you took. So it's another little, not a little help. So mapping and describing your parcel. So once you've gone out there and you've, did, you've put on your all the corner posts, brush and flag the lines, um, you're gonna have to map your parcel. You're gonna have to describe this on a sketch plot on page five of your lease application. And we're also going to ask you to draw your parcel on your staking map and turn a copy of that in with your lease application. So you can either take your large staking map that's in each one of your packets, draw your parcel on there, and when you bring in your lease application, we'll just take a photocopy of that and, and keep that for the file. Alternatively, you can go to the website, kind of blow up that particular section, just print out that screenshot effectively and draw your parcel on there. That's, that's perfectly sufficient um, as well. So your sketch plan. So, First off, each one of these sketch plots, this scale is one mile, right? So this is one mile across. Each one of these internal squares is a quarter of a mile. Um, so we're gonna ask that you draw your parcel at scale, right? Depending on the situation, and since there's a lot of information to get in there, you may have to modify that scale a little bit. If you need to modify the scale, that's fine, but we need to know what that scale is ultimately gonna be at, because that's gonna help us out when we're doing it. So using this scale, uh, draw in uh, your parcel, and draw, what did I just do? Hey, all right, wrong button. So uh, draw in your uh, draw in your parcel, draw in your reference point in the distance and direction uh, from your reference point to your corner number one over here. Uh, draw the boundaries of your parcel and then draw in from your corner number one down to your corner number two and then and likewise around the parcel. Uh, we're then gonna ask that you label uh, that, well, Okay, we're gonna ask that you, when you, when you draw on your parcel, that you label the direction, the distance, and the azimuth between all of those. So indicate all that information you provided in pages what, two through five on your lease application. Um, label that, the, the direction, the azimuth, and the distance um, right there on the staking map. Also, draw in any, uh, any adjacent geographic features, um, anything specific to that area on your parcel. So if there's a, another staked parcel adjacent to you, Write that on there. If there's a creek or a stream nearby, uh, draw that on there as well. Um, up here, this is a great one. They show the unnamed lake. They show this uh, the stream off here to the north, uh, and there's an adjacent parcel to them to the south. We're also going to ask for your proposed access route. So this would be a great opportunity to put in that you know your your two reference points. Um, we're also going to ask for your building site. Draw on there that specific area that's going to be important to you and in that area that uh, that you'd like to retain. Um, and then uh, for more information on this and for some illustrations, you can look to pages uh, 28 and 29 of your uh, staking, or some of your lease application. 